Okay, recording is started. Okay, hello everybody. This is Chris Cotton, National Marketing Director uh, with the Juice Plus Company. Excited to be sharing with you our third monthly installment on uh, the human performance calls that we've been doing. And I've teamed up with uh, Jeff Olson as we share this incredible passion for sports, recreation, all out peak performance. So our other common thread obviously is that we've aligned with an incredible company, an incredible organization that uh, helps us uh, inspire healthy living around the world. And that's organization, the Juice Plus Company has been doing that for 47 years. But we're mostly excited about the last 24 years. Seems like a big, uh, a long chunk of time. But we have been having this mission of inspiring healthy living around the world for that time and have started this new uh, organization, this new movement really called the Healthy Living Revolution. And because of that tonight, uh, we, along with our guest speaker, who also shares that same passion on human performance. Uh, and uh, what, what we want to share with you tonight, of course, is, is this company for that long period of time has been bringing concentrated fruits and vegetables into the marketplace that have been affecting people's lives. It is now the number one selling encapsulated whole food product in the world and by far the most researched. But that is not what we're here to talk about tonight. Tonight we're just here to, to share our enthusiasm for the healthy living revolution, hashtag take healthy back. And if there's anybody on the call that thinks that maybe we don't need that, you probably, if you talk to people around the country, you'll hear a lot of people say, well, I eat well enough. Well, number one, if well enough is good enough for you, that's one thing. But the other thing is, if that were true, as a country, we wouldn't be ranked uh, number first in expensive health care and five times higher than the average of the 16 most industrialized nations. We rank first in expense and last in effectiveness. So we know we, we're on the right mission and doing the right thing. And we, we're just simply passionate about this, this message. And we have a track record of 24 years of, of changing people's lives. So really what we're here to do tonight is share our personal experiences, hope you um, can pay it forward, uh, hope you can find a part in our, our uh, revolution. If it's just sharing our message or just yourself eating better and get your family eating better, and maybe looking at the, a way to get more concentrated fruits and vegetables into your system, wherever you play a part, uh, we want to include you in it. So um, I think right now what I'm going to do is, is just share my experiences. I'm two years shy of my 70th birthday. I uh, water ski every day uh, in the summer, and I stand up paddle surf every day in the winter, uh, usually on the ocean in the winter for two hours a day. And if I'm not doing that, you'll, you'll find me uh, on my mountain bike, climbing mountains, skiing, I am on no medications. I uh, rarely see a doctor unless it's because I got a little bit overzealous at one of those other activities. And uh, I have been accused of being a professional recreationologist. So having said that as my personal experience, uh, let me give a little information here on Jeff. Um, also a hard charger. He's known since he was five years old that he wanted to be an Olympian. Uh, he went from a professional athlete to a career in Wall Street where he uh, plays to win. I love this quote. He said he made money, he lost money, and he built character. So that's, that's great, Jeff. Uh, he's realized this life of being your own boss was the best way to go. In 2005, he, he joined his wife, Tony, who you see there, uh, with this great company and has been packing thousands of people in a big way. Uh, his passion is to advance human performance nutrition as a higher form of sports nutrition. He sits on several boards. He's been, done some TED Talks that you can access on YouTube. And as we said, he's a two-time Olympian, three-time national champion downhiller, and a Pan American Games gold medal winner. So, Jeff, I'm uh, passing it over to you. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm really excited about tonight's call. Uh, we've been hosting these calls, as Chris said, for a few months now. And uh, the Genesis kind of came at it from the standpoint of listening to, uh, as Chris will attest, 
uh, men and women way smarter than us uh, over the years with MDs and PhDs and RDs and uh, masters in public health and so on and so forth. And, you know, as lay people trying to absorb that and, and digest all of the science, you know, Chris talked about a, a lot of the science. I, I think the over sort of arching umbrella for tonight, at least from my view, for those that are tuning in and new to the call or new to this conversation, is the train has really left the station on this and we're just trying to help people catch up. Uh, and I think uh, the more you know, the more uh, you'll find out how uh, sort of cutting edge uh, we are trying to lead the conversation in the world of medicine and health and wellness and fitness. And my sort of passion and wheelhouse, what we're here to talk about tonight is athletics and really more human performance. And it's a broad, uh, I say human when I say human performance, um, as I tell folks, the best example of human performance that I can come up with is pregnancy. Uh, if that's not the best definition I can think of. Most people think athletically, uh, but I don't care if you're the greatest generation or the next generation or a type 2 diabetic or a type A personality or a meat eater or a vegan or, or wh whoever you are, this is a universal conversation because when you go inside the body, look inside us, what brings the body to life, what makes it work are some pretty simple fundamentals. And, you know, the best coach I ever had said I got to come up with a, you know, half a dozen things that if you master as athletes, you'll become the best in the world at. And it's really the master of fundamentals. And, you know, maybe Ricky can speak to this. Um, you know, the best in the world just do the fundamentals better than everyone. And they train them to where they become unconsciously competent. You know, I chased snow for a living. Uh, the penalty for error was high in my sport. Uh, downhill ski racer, two-time Olympian. I had a lot of fun. It was a great ride. I got a wife out of the deal, met my wife at the Olympic Games. And I kind of came into this whole conversation with, a, with a, a fairly good understanding about fueling for performance, about treating my body as a, as a temple, as a Ferrari. Now I just want to be a truck, you know, that gets every, up every day and works and that's durable, physiologically durable. But after sort of marinating in this conversation, I'll share my story and then uh, kind of tee up some ideas. Really tonight's call uh, that I would like, that I'm most excited about is to hear from Ricky Prohl. And Ricky, this is kind of his coming out party, if you will, having left the NFL after 23 years and his first opportunity to really kind of uh, open up the kind of open mic and have him share. But my story, um, as I said, you know, I was a 20th century athlete. I competed uh, in two Olympic games. When I retired, I worked on wallstreet.coms and I was introduced to this whole conversation about plant powders about produce concentrates 17 years ago. And I can remember when I was introduced to it, it made immediate sense to me. Uh, I was like, what part of this don't you get? Plant matter, plant powders. I knew right away that it wasn't a multivitamin. I knew it was different. Uh, it was a think different approach. Uh, at that time, Apple had launched their think different campaign. And I saw it as a design shift into a food first approach. I understood it wasn't a multivitamin. It was vitamin, mineral, enzyme, antioxidant, phytochemical, phytonutrient. It was, it was all of that matter that matters, as I like to say. And after spending a decade listening to MDs and PhDs talk about prevention, prevention never did much for me. I, I was off the couch doing stuff. I was active. And if you're young and on this call, 20, 30 something, prevention is a little abstraction. It's kind of an intellectually fun, but it doesn't mean much because your body's working. And so what I sort of have been able to translate through all of the science and listening to these people is put it in the language of performance. Athletes are ruthlessly practical. They will do what works. This works. It's tried and proven. It's built to last. It's here to stay. One of my professional goals, I will tell you, is to try to help pull sports nutrition into the 21st century. Um, but what I've tried to do is, is take that prevention uh, conversation and put it in the language that will get athletes' attention. So as an example, you know, as an athlete, are you interested in maximizing and sustaining energy output? Um, are you interested in increasing your vascular capacity? Um, are you interested in improving uh, your, your immune system so you don't get taken out by a common cold, a bug, a fever, when you're getting on the bus or on a plane going to the Olympic Games or the Super Bowl or whatever? And so I call it human performance nutrition, and I think it's a higher form of sports nutrition because it actually does – uh, it fuels for physiological performance first, sports performance second. Let me unpackage that real quick, and then we'll, uh, I'll kind of finish up with my story, and I, I want to have the last half for Ricky. Um, food does three things in the body. Human performance nutrition, sports nutrition, um, I like to say has a blind spot, and it's this what I call this third pillar. 
The first two pillars probably everyone's heard of. It's fueling and it's building. We, we, we eat carbs and we fuel the gasoline. It's kind of the gasoline conversation. We build our body with proteins and amino acids. So fueling, we create energy. Building, we create matter that, you know, matter that becomes us. Um, so fueling and building are the first two pillars. That third pillar is really where applied science comes into play in the 21st century and pulling sports nutrition into present day, it's conditioning and physiology. So that third pillar, conditioning. And what I mean by that is conditioning through the daily bathing of nutrient-dense foods. What that does is it trains your physiology to work. It's just results-driven. So whether you're a type 2 diabetic or or a, a, a pregnant woman or an athlete or someone dealing with a chronic disease or whoever you are, you want your body to work when you want it to work. And that has to do with this compounding effect of eating great food over time. Food does things to the body over time. And this compounding effect of plant matter is really, really important. And it may not mean much in a day, in a week, in a month, but you play that out over years and that's where a competitive advantage occurs. It's like just taking a little bit, a little fundamental thing and practicing and practice and practice and practice where you master it. And it's the same with our body. If we can do that fundamental thing of getting nutrient dense matter into our body every day, we may not feel it initially, but it plays out. I didn't experience much when I got on these plant powders in the first year and a half. And then I started to notice some things. I was recovering faster. I had a better adaptive response. I could beat my body. I could break it down and I would get up the next day refreshed. And so where this conditioning physiology really comes into play is in the adaptive response. It's in recovery. It's delivering physiological durability. And I think Ricky's probably going to speak to you as, a, as a, a veteran in the NFL, having to be physiologically durable, get, every, get up every day, bang your body, and get up every day and do it again and again and again. And so these plant powders, Juice Plus, you know, it's been around a long time. It's the global leader. I take it like it's brushing my teeth every day. It's just part of my regimen and I play soccer with 20 30 year olds like I now just a recreationalist like Kierquist and what I want to do is just have my body work when I want it to work and that's performance that's results and so um what I want to do now is is you know and I can go on and on and on I, I I will send in the chat room a website that I kind of use as an introduction to human performance nutrition I'll put it in the chat um and it's around these three pillars and it's around sort of these concepts of physiological conditioning. I'll just put it in the chat box when uh, Ricky jumps in and I'll put it in at the end so people can access it. But what I wanna do now is shift gears over to Ricky. And um, Ricky, this is your coming out party. This is uh, 23 years in the, uh, let me give you Ricky's bio. Uh, you know, Chris talked about uh, scientific credibility, uh, but athletes want street cred. And, you know, I've tried to bring a little bit of street cred with my past, but Ricky's got a resume that uh, I think any, any manly man would aspire to. You know, a lot of our challenge in this business and in this conversation is getting the attention of men. Um, and I think Ricky was going to do a great job tonight just sort of opening up uh, his story and showing you that I bring some massive street cred to this conversation around little itty bitty fruit and vegetable powders and the importance of nutrition as a man. And in his own ability to perform. So, Ricky, 17 years in the NFL. He uh, was rookie of the year at the Cardinals. He broke some records. He went on to the Seahawks, the Bears, the Rams, the Panthers, the Colts. And he was in four Super Bowls. He won two. Just Google Ricky Prohl and the 1999 NFC Championships, and you'll see the game winning, game winning pass from Kurt Warner, who was just inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's got three beautiful children. He went on after the NFL to be a, a trainer with the Panthers for six years, and he's just recently retired. So now his muzzle is off, um, and you're going to hear him sort of unpackage what he believes in this, uh, how he believes in who we are, what we're up to, and how we roll, and how it impacted him as an athlete. So, Ricky, welcome. Congratulations on a 23-year run. You're, you've now launched Prolific Park with your family. Uh, sports training and athletic center, life after ath being a pro athlete. Um, maybe just kind of introduce yourself to everyone through the lens of um, your journey in the NFL and how uh, food, diet, nutrition was in your wheelhouse and then maybe kind of come into the last part of your story where this whole conversation was introduced to you. Basically, let's hear your Juice Plus story and then I'll ask you some other questions. Um, well, first of all, thanks. It's, it's an honor to 
to be here and, and I appreciate Chris and Jeff, uh, you know, introducing me to the Juice Plus family, uh, you know, as far as um, nationwide and, and, and getting a chance to share my story. Um, but it, it's, uh, you know, it, it's funny. I look back at early in my career and, and I wish I wish I had known Juice Plus, you know, back in 1990 because, uh, you know, how the game evolved. Um, as I was saying, and I was telling someone the other day, it, you know, we had to go out for lunch. You know, we didn't, we weren't eating healthy um, because we just didn't have that resource. And as the, as the league evolved, um, you know, there, there became nutritionists and, and uh, the food groups, like you said, the fruits and vegetables were available. And, and I think um, it was, it was then when I became educated on the importance of, of the food groups and what you ate to fuel your body. And, and it's like you said, uh, Jeff, the, the fundamentals. I, I think it was something um, that helped me become successful in running route, great routes was doing the little things and the details. And, and, um, and that's where food became a huge part of my success and how I ate. And, and I think when, when the, the league started to change and, and NFL teams began to have um, chefs and kitchen, you know, kitchens were full blown three, four chefs, nutritionists in there, educating players on how they needed to fuel their body. The fruits and the vegetables were available, you know, whole foods were there. And I was, you know, from spinach salad every day, um, you know, chicken, salmon, um, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, all that stuff was, was there every day, you know? And, and then as, as, um, you know, I went on throughout my career, that became a, a, a main part of my um, everyday life was how I ate and how I fueled my body. Um, but I think when I look back, uh, it was a time when it wasn't. You know, I was – then they had the, all the anti-inflammatories from the Indocin, Naperson, Darvaset, Tordal shots, all the stuff that NFL players did to remain on the field because at the end of the day, you've got to be on the field. And, and, um, and I think uh, – it was a woman I had met that I had worked with me in St. Louis, uh, Adrian. The name of her company was Life Balance, and she uh, used Plus, and, and I wasn't really aware of it. She didn't introduce it to me at that particular time when I was in St. Louis. It was when um, I came back home and was playing for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Kelly had something she was dealing with physically, and she flew back, met with Adrian got it worked out and came back with Juice Plus. And it kind of saw the bottle and I said, we have that in Carolina. I mean, we, the, the red and the green, those, those capsules are, are in Carolina. It's in our- When you say you, we have it in Carolina, you mean the Carolina Panthers. It, it was in, it, on the team being used in the training room. Correct. It was, it was, in, it was in our cafeterias and on each table within our training table. And, um, but it was then when I got introduced to it, Kelly obviously um, was educated. We were both educated on, on the fruits and vegetables. Um, and then that's where it kind of took off. And, and, and I, I, I took it for the next, you know, five years as a, as a player. And um, I think now, you know, then I became a, a coach and then I was outside of football. I didn't have the, the fruits and vegetables available right there in, in you know, um, with a nutritionist. And, and that's where I think the whole, I look at it now and um, life after football and where juice plus has bridged the gap for me. Um, to Ricky, where Ricky, just a question, just, you know, for, for elite athletes, sort of the recommendation is, uh, you know, double digit servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Just talk to you about, you know, the best in the world, you know, in the NFL, um, a, a lot of that conversation is about mass and about calories and about, you know, protein and fruit, little itty bitty fruit and some vegetables may not be sort of all that testosterone or manly, but, but uh, just talk about just the real life scenario of, of, of how many fruits and vegetables would you estimate that a typical NFL athlete, you know, eats on a daily basis? I mean, they're in the game of fueling their body for performance, but where's that gap in the NFL if, if double digit is the minimum for elite athletes, what would be the average consumption for an elite athlete in the NFL? Oh my God. I mean, I don't even know if I could, I mean, it's just huge. It's, it's huge doses uh, from, um, I mean, from 
three, four, five smoothies a day to, um, you know, spinach to, to all the stuff that, like I said, that you can't, you can't, you can't buy it in, uh, enough of it in the store. And it, and it was right. available to these guys. And it was, like you said, in huge doses. I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know how many, how many calories or how many, um, you know, uh, plates. I guess, I guess what I'm asking Ricky is, uh, as much as NFL athletes eat, uh, they probably don't get to that recommended, you know, just minimum of fruits and vegetables because they're so worried about the caloric intake. And, you know, here these plant powders comes along, and it sounds like the Carolinas did kind of – Panthers, they kind of did their own homework and saw this as a – we call it an ergogenic tool, a performance tool that would help these NFL athletes bridge the gap, and that's why you found it on your train table, right? Yeah, no question. And, and that's where – at my age, when I got to Carolina, I was 35 years old, and that's where, to me, I couldn't take enough Juice Plus and, and because of the way it made me feel. And now all of a sudden, from early in my career – where, you know, I may be eating junk food. Um, now I'm eating whole food nutrition and juice plus, and I'm taking, you know, from, you know, anti-inflammatories now, I'm taking the purples. I'm taking tons of purples instead of taking Indocin, instead yeah. of eating a Tordal shot. Um, so, yeah, t talk to us about, you mentioned the vineyard, the purples. You know, we've got the vegetable blend, the, the fruit blend, and the berry blend, and, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, a mature uh, athlete in any sport as we get beyond sort of peak physiology in early thirties, you know, talk to us about in the, in the last half of your career, you know, the, the, the adaptive response, your, your ability to recover, to beat your body, get up the next day and, and be durable and compete with 20 and, and, and young, you know, 20 year olds talk about how nutrition kind of, you, you began to see that as more and more of a competitive tool and a weapon for you as a, as a, uh, you know, a mature athlete in the NFL. Well, and I think that's what Juice Plus helped me because it's, it's like anything, you, you feel good, you're going to perform good. And, and then with Juice Plus, you're going to recover even better, you know? And, and I think that's what, that's what helped me a great deal is, is, um, is the, 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 you know, everything, when you're taking a pounding, the, the beating you take, the lactic acid you get, the, you need the, those berries just help me recover. I mean, where, um, Again, I didn't need to take the the indocin, the anti-inflammatories. The berries provided that anti-inflammatory for me, and um, and that's like you said. I mean, I'm able now to still do the things that I was doing when I was playing because I feel good. I can recover, um, therefore I can perform at a level that probably your normal 50 year olds can't. And, and um, I mean, to be honest with you, Jeff, I feel like I could still play. I may not be able to play 60 plays, but I could still feel like I could play 20 to 25. Uh, plays but um it's just you know it's like you said you know I got to a point in my life where I was I would I I ate right I took care of myself so when I first started taking juice plus it's not like I said wow I feel that much better it, it's been over time to where I haven't been sick in 15 years um, so, you, so you kind of can attest to just this compounding effect over time and this incremental thing becoming an advantage for you over time I mean I go to bed my wife I mean I go to bed at 11, 30, 12 o'clock, and I'm up at 5 o'clock. Just, just to put it in perspective for everyone, what Ricky's talking about, his physiological durability, to give you a little street cred stat, at age 38 in the NFL, he averaged 17 yards per carry. And I would just challenge you to go Google that and put it up in today's athletes. And at a, as a 38-year-old in the NFL, averaging 17 yards per carry or per reception, I guess, you know, I mean, th that's a stat, my friend, and so a uh, credit to you. When, when you retired, okay, so you're an elite athlete, you played the game well, you retired, you, become, you became a coach. Talk to us about today's athlete. Talk to us about when you began in the NFL, you kind of said it, you know, nutrition was maybe off the radar, it's come full circle. How have you as a coach having the next generation come up asking, you know, what do you do, and now at Prolific Park, teaching and talking to kids about the next generation. Tell us your, you know, your nutrition pitch to the next generation and why fruits and vegetables are important or how, how's the conversation go or what do they ask you and give us a little insight into that uh, part of your day these days. It, it, it's to be honest with you, Jeff, it's difficult because these kids are so talented. They're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster than when, when I came out. And, um, 
but they need to be educated. They, they just, everything is right there for them. I mean, the NFL does a tremendous job. Each franchise, these franchises do a tremendous job of bringing in nutritionists, trying to educate the importance of what you put in your body, how you fuel your body. But at the end of the day, they're still eating McDonald's and junk food cereals in the morning. Um, and, and it's for me with my guys, um, because the question always comes up, how did you play 17 years? How did you do it? I can't even you know, imagine. And, and I said, because of what I put in my body and how I fuel my body. And, and, then, and then that's when I get into Juice Plus. And towards yeah. the end of, my, end of my career, I was blessed to have this um, whole food that just gave me everything I needed from, you know, when, when I was sore, when I was tired, it fueled me. It gave me the energy that I needed. It gave me the anti-inflammatories to where I felt good, to where my recovery was the next day I was ready to go again. And, and, um, and, and, and that's where it's, it was great because Carolina Panthers, they provided it right there. And they're seeing me. I, I, my whole life, I, I try to lead by example in everything I do. Um, as a business owner, as a football player, as a, as a, a leader of my family. Um, and so they see me taking it because I'm in the cafeteria taking it. And, um, and, you know, I'm there every day and, and performing. I'm running routes. I'm showing them how to run routes. And, and you know, there's something to be said for that. And I think, and now at Prolific Park, it's the same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly joking with, with whether it's my, my staff or whether it's kids that I'm training about how important it is and, and what you put in your body and, and um, yeah, talk, Ricky, talk to us. Yeah, just we got a few minutes left and I want to let Chris Cotton kind of wrap up. But now you're post uh, pro pro career, both uh, both as an athlete and as a coach. Now you've launched Prolific Park and are talking to families and children. And as you said, it's kind of a blind spot with elite athletes. How big a blind spot is it with just the typical family that comes into your park about the, you know, food is a weapon and it can be a weapon of mass destruction or mass vitality, depending on how you use it. Do you see that as a big blind spot in parenting today? Well, and you know, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it's just like you said about pregnant moms. I mean, I, all I know is my, our three kids are healthy. My wife's healthy. Um, when we go to take, they get their daily physicals every year. Their blood work is off the charts. I mean, that's the first thing they say is holy mackerel. You know, it's, it's, it's glaring. And, and, and I, I stay in physical shape. I run, I do a lot. I'm very active lifting. And, and, and people ask me, well, you know, when I tell them I'm 50 years old, they're like, you're kidding me. And, and I contribute to juice plus it's because I, I get up every day at five in the morning and I can't wait to go to work and I can't wait to go lift and, and pass this information on and, and I don't stick it down people's throat because that's not who I am. But when they ask me, I tell them, this is what is juice plus has changed my life. It's changed my family's life and take it for what it's worth. You either believe it or, or you don't, but I I'm always just trying to educate families and, and how it can help because I think Kelly and I, it, it's, it's the passion and that's why we built prolific park. It's a family youth center and, it, and we want to help people and, and juice plus is a great avenue. It's in one, final, one final question you popped in. We might go a minute or two over, but you, when you came into uh, th this community that, you know, kind of represents these fruit and vegetable powders, maybe give kind of the new people a sneak peek into this, you know, global community of people that are up to something that you experienced as a culture, as a tribe, as, as a conversation, you were kind of blown away with, with your first experience at our national conference and, and seeing all these people that were carrying this message out into the world. How did that make you, or what was your experience with that first time? It was, um, for me, it was, it was an awesome experience. It, it just, um, it was exciting just to see the passion that everybody had, the camaraderie, um, the energy level at, at, at the conference um, in California was just invigorating. I mean, for me to always, my whole life has been being a part of a team and, and, and having goals and, and being passionate at what I do. Um, it was just glaring about, you know, the excitement, the energy, especially at conference. And I know it's tough, you know, when, when it becomes a grind, you know, everybody talks about the grind, but then to come there and get rejuvenated and you see all the teams and their leaders and the upfront, it, it, it was just, for me, it was, um, it was exciting to see. It, it motivated me to really come out and, and want to do this kind of stuff and, and want to continue to, to grow. Um, 
in, in telling the story of Juice Plus and sharing the story to, to people in my community and, and hopefully reach out to more people outside my community. Well, and on that note, I want to hand it over to Chris, but I, I welcome you to the community now that, the, as I say, the muzzle is off. Just for those of you who are new, we don't pay the Carolina Panthers to take Juice Plus. They buy it. So we can't go blasting this all over social media and putting it together. And they just do, and athletes around the world, we don't pay them. They just buy it and take it because it works. And so please use your discretion on social media. Thank you for sharing tonight, Ricky, and your first kind of, uh, um, I guess, coming out party in, in, the, in our community. We're going to have you on more. You're going to be asked to speak a lot, I'm sure. But Chris, why don't you wrap up? Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much, Ricky. Really appreciate it tonight the conversation we had the other day and really i'm just going to say it like this you know we we can't prove that taking juice plus makes you a better athlete makes you a better you know, performance there's no proof of that there is proof by though and this is what we've all made a testament to tonight is there is proof that you recover quicker and doesn't it make sense if you recover quicker you can work out stronger. You can have a higher performance. That's up to you. So we've proven that you can recover quicker. And you know, um, besides better performance, you can end up with less injury. How important is that? Less injury. And finally, I guess we got a little in interference here. So what about longevity? Okay. For athletes like me, uh, you want to try to play at them, Jeff? Yeah, I'm uh, not managing the controls here. Tony, if you could mute those folks, that would be great. We're just wrapping up. Well, hey, Chris, we got over 2,000 people on the call tonight. So okay. we might want to just wrap up. I, I will okay, say let me, that, just, let me just say this. You yeah, talk about being a 30-year-old at early 30s. How about double 30s? That's me. <laughs> so the great thing for me is longevity in the sport. Longevity in your life. Ricky said it best. He said, at the end of the day, you've got to be on the field. Let's go on the field, everybody. Get Thanks on the again. field to play. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ricky. I put uh, the link in the chat room. God bless everyone. Thank you.